everybody. This is Jennifer Schaus, and thanks for joining us in our webinar Wednesday series. Uh, our webinars are complimentary and recorded, and they cover a variety of government contracting topics. Obviously, today is not Wednesday, but we've decided in December to add a couple extra topics with uh, some great speakers to, uh, to enhance your knowledge of government contracting. Uh, as I mentioned, they are all recorded, and so later this afternoon, early evening, we should have all of the recordings from today up on our YouTube channel, which now has over 300 government contracting webinars. Uh, we also post them on our website, and those are segmented by category. So uh, as far as today's webinars, they'll be listed under the proposal section of the, uh, the archived webinars. We do not take questions, just to try to keep these short and simple and to the point. So if you do have questions about today's presentation, uh, Jennifer Adeli's contact information will be on the last slide. It'll include her phone number and email address. So if you've got questions about proposal writing in general or just today's topic, you can contact her directly. A little bit about us. We do provide professional services for federal contractors. This includes product companies, service companies, as well as software firms. We work with large businesses small businesses, domestic and foreign, and our services are listed there on the screen in front of you. More information on our website. Our newsletter goes out every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and we now reach a little bit over 16,000 subscribers, and that includes both government and government contractors. Uh, we're currently running a December cyber special, so if you're interested in uh, advertising in 2020, contact us at the hello email address listed there and we can send over some pricing. Okay, so Jennifer Adeli is our speaker today. A little bit about her is listed here on this slide, including education, her company name, and her experience in government contracting. And today she is covering roles and best practices for white team reviews. Jennifer, very excited to have you back on the program and I will turn it over to you. Great, thank you so much. Happy to be on Team Jennifer here. Uh, we're gonna talk about <laughs> roles and best practices for white team reviews. Uh, so first and foremost, you might be asking yourself if you can go to the next slide, Jennifer. Uh, what is a white team review? Well, we actually kind of call it white team or white glove. And as you can imagine, it gets its name from the white glove service that you might think of as a professional butler or a five-star hotel. Maybe you've been to a fancy spa, something like that. What it really tries to convey is that no single detail is left unchecked in your proposal process. And why is this important? The reason why is that if you think about your proposal experience, most likely at the 11th hour, you found yourself in a sprint. You found yourself with your hair on fire, printing things, packaging them, boxing them up inserting new graphics, getting signatures on pages, and you tape that thing up and you box it and you sent it out to FedEx and you might have thought, oh my God, did that last page go in correctly? Oh my gosh, I was slow, deep, sleep deprived. I'm not sure that we got it right. The white glove review or the white team review is in your process to avoid that panicky feeling at the end where errors can be easily introduced because things are happening so fast and so furious and you probably are sleep deprived because you've been pushing against a very aggressive deadline. So your white glove is to make sure that not a single detail is left unchecked. It's your final quality review. You're gonna, if you find something, you're gonna fix only one that, what, excuse me, that one item. You're not going to start re-engineering the whole process because you found one error on one page. It's also a confirmation to slow down and make sure that all the required elements are included. We're gonna talk about signature pages, CDs, things like that. And one thing that's really important with a white glove review is to make sure that somebody in your organization blessed that proposal to go out. And that's actually surprisingly a step that a lot of companies that we work with fail to do. They find that at the last minute, somebody just hits upload or hit send or put it in that box and nobody with the authority to approve actually said, yep, looks good, thumbs up, good to go. I will mention that if your company is ISO certified or is a CMMN shop or has other high quality control processes in place, that final approval to submit is something that you are typically required to do. So you wanna make sure to have that in your process. Next slide. 
So speaking of process, where exactly do we do that white glove? Ideally, you're not doing it in the middle of the night like I just described. Ideally, you are consciously putting this in your process at the end, after final production, and before delivery. Now, what this means is that you should not be printing and flipping and looking at it and saying, oh, I'm printing it, I took it off the printer, and now I'm doing my white glove all at the same time. That is definitely not best practice. What you really want to do is do the final production, meaning let's just talk about a print proposal if this is going in hard copy. You've printed the whole thing, you put everything in the binders, you put the spines and you put the covers and you put all the tabs and it's all there sitting on your table ready to be looked at. Then you step back, you take a deep breath, you pull the team together for your white glove and we're gonna talk about who should be in that team. And then you start looking at it page by page by page from the front to the back. This is a conscious separate step. It should not be mixed in with final production and it should not be as you're sprinting out the door or driving on the beltway to go deliver that. It's not part of delivery, it's before that. Next slide, please. So, okay, we know it's after final production and we know it's obviously before you submit it, but where would this fit in my overall calendar? So what's very important with White Glove is to make space in your schedule from the very beginning to do this step because it's really easy to skip it at the end if you haven't consciously put it in your schedule and if people haven't seen it on the schedule all along. So you can see there, this is an example of what a 30-day schedule might look like. This would be a hard copy submission. And in that example, you can see there on day 28, we planned that that was the day that we were going to be printing and boxing and putting everything in tabs and we were gonna be burning our CDs, and then the next morning, after a good night's sleep, we were gonna calmly go through the white glove process, look at it from front to back, fix any issues that might have slipped through at the end, we're gonna tape that box up and meet that FedEx deadline by five o'clock, and it was gonna be delivered the next day. Of course, what you wanna work on with your white glove is that you always need to make sure you have a cushion. So, for example, if you had an email submission, you want to work your way backwards from the deadline, give yourself plenty of time for the white glove, and plan on having glitches just in case. Next slide. So who should be on your white glove review team? Well, this may seem self-evident, but your proposal manager or whoever was the lead on your proposal should be on that white glove review. They know the proposal better than anybody. What's also helpful is to have your production team, for example, a desktop publisher or editor or graphics or anybody who is really intimate in that document. I've had examples where graphic artists were involved in a white glove, they were flipping through the pages and they said, oh my gosh, this is not the final version of the graphic. I made changes to this last night and uploaded it. How come it didn't get it in? So the person who knows the content is the best person to look at it for final approval. You, as I mentioned, you probably want to have an executive or somebody else who has final approval to give it the thumbs up. And then finally, we typically don't see subcontractors or teammates involved at that point because there's probably some of your secret sauce in the proposal that you don't want to share with them. But you may want to consider having your joint venture members part of that process because you are considered equals in most JV arrangements. Next slide. So let's talk about the do's and the don'ts. Okay, so the first white glove do is to create a punch list or a what we call a wall of truth. And this can be literally your whiteboard in your office where you've been writing things down all along. For example, we want to make sure that we constantly say that the number of FTEs in our company is 65. Not 63, not 67, 65. So that's on your wall of truth because maybe that typo, maybe it used to say 63 and you're going to be checking at the end to make sure that you're consistently using the right number. You don't want to be going off of memory when you're flipping through for the white glove. You want to be using that punch list, the wall of truth. Use your original compliance matrix as well and make sure that you have all amendments, the Q&A, RFP, everything at your fingertips just in case there's a question. Two best practices in your dues. One is Give your reviewers in the white glove focus areas. So you might say, graphic artist, only look at the graphics. Editor, only look for specific edits that we made along that we want to make sure made it into the final version. Maybe your executive team um, is only looking at pricing to make sure that it's consistent with their final decisions. If you find any errors, do not have everybody willy-nilly start going into the final version in soft copy and start making changes. Assign one lead person to make changes in the master file 
And typically we say that you only want to put that change in and then reintroduce that change one page at a time. So let's say you did find that a last minute change to a graphic did not make it into the final version. Replace that one graphic in that one page, re-PDF that page and insert it into your final copy rather than regenerating the entire file. That will save you a lot of trees, first of all, and it will really control the version control that you're dealing with to make sure that only that one change is made in the one place that it's needed. Next slide, please. So we know what you should do. What are some of the things that you shouldn't do in a white glove um, phase of your proposal? We definitely say, you've heard me say, take a deep breath. Well, this is just a reminder here to do that. Don't change your overall solution at this point. What's gonna happen is that you might see something at the very end when you go, oh gosh, I don't really know if the six step process still makes sense. Maybe it should have only been five steps. And you might have this temptation to throw everything out and quickly change it and we can do it, we can switch it, we've got time. Typically we say do not do that at the last minute. Do not do that during white gloves because oftentimes those changes are really brought about just from anxiety and sleep deprivation and maybe you've only been eating pizza and donuts for 24 hours and it's not driven by facts. You worked on this proposal for a long time. You thought about that process. If you change it at the last minute, there's a lot of unintended consequences that are gonna trickle throughout the rest of your proposal. The other thing that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna make any what we call happy to glad changes. If you see something, the word happy essentially means the same thing as glad, it's not really worth the anxiety of changing it in the proposal, having to reproduce that section of the art of the proposal in your document, only change things that are really going to make or break the difference between winning or losing. And that's gonna be a blatant compliance issue, absolutely wrong pricing, or an inconsistent data point. And then last but not least, when you're in white glove, if you're making a change, just make the change, own it. This is not the time to have track changes and comments and going around and around in multiple versions. Come to a decision on what the appropriate change is, make it, regenerate that page, and then move on. Next slide, please. Okay, so you've heard me talk about print submissions. So white glove is slightly different, whether you are submitting in hard copy, whether you're submitting an email, or you're doing an upload to a server. So let's talk about print submissions first. Even though we don't have to do these as often as we used to, they still are the norm in many cases. A white glove, if you're dealing with print submissions, is essentially what we call a page flip. You have all the binders laid out for, and you go through them volume by volume from front to back. You're looking for things like, are there any issues with the printing? Sometimes a little page might get crinkled in the printer. And if you see that as you're going through, you're gonna go ahead and pop that page out. You're gonna reprint just that one page, put the clean one back in the book and then move on. Uh, you're going to be looking for things like, are the tabs in the right place? Are they numbered right? Did everything print and get produced as we expected it to? You're also going to look for other things like, did the margins stay true? Did we have a graphic that fell off the page? Stuff like that. And then, of course, you're looking for other things related to the print job itself, like, did this, do we have volume one on the cover and volume one on the spine? Sometimes those get flipped because you're in such a hurry, you put the spine in and it's the wrong one. Same thing with CD labels, um, the labels on the outside of the box, your FedEx label that's going to the right address, does it have the right suite number, things like that. You're looking for everything physically related to the print production. Next slide, please. So, that sounds well and good, but we're not shipping this one. This one is just going by email. So how do I conduct a white glove? Well. The best practice is that even if you're submitting in soft copy, you still want to print the entire proposal to do your white glove. And you might think, well, that just seems silly. I mean, I'm submitting it on soft copy. They're going to look at it on the screen. Why should I bother printing it and marking it up? But here's the truth of that, is that the human eye and the human brain see detail differently on a screen versus hard copy. You may notice this when you're looking at emails, maybe you print it out and you, you notice a different detail. I notice that even if I read a book on a Kindle versus reading it in hard copy, I see different things in the story depending on the format that I'm using. Same thing applies to your proposal. 
The other thing to remember is that even though you're submitting it in hard copy, the evaluator is probably printing it. So you want to make sure that, for example, the colors look good when they're printed, things like gradients and drop shadows can look really funny. Uh, they look great on the screen, but then when you print it, it may not look as good. So you really want to make sure that your screen version and your printed copy are consistent with each other. Beyond the quality of the proposal itself, you also want to be careful about the technical requirements of an email submission. So you need to make sure that your file size does not exceed the maximum. And this might be in your RFP. It may say something like file size cannot exceed 10 meg or 15 or 20 meg. Or it might be a limitation that's been established by your own company, whether your server size or your email um, application that you're using. Another thing to keep in mind is that most government agencies will not accept zip files because they can contain um, macros and um, viruses and things like that. So don't assume that, hey, I can just zip it and send it. You should always assume that you have to send it as a normal static file, not zipped or not compressed. Another thing to look for when you are white gloving your email submission or your upload submission is that you want to make sure that your file names make sense. That if the instructions told you, you know, name it file one underscore company name underscore RFP number, that you did it exactly as they asked for it. And then another thing to keep in mind is that Excel can be really tricky when it comes to email or just soft copy submissions because Excel might look really great on your screen and everything seems fine, but it'll insert page breaks at the places that you least expect it to happen. Or if you tell it to print everything on one page, it might shrink that font down to like three points. And not only is it not compliant, but you can't even read it. So you want to make sure that Excel, always check your Excel that when you print it out, that it's going to, the page breaks are going to make sense. It's not going to chop off the content in a weird place, and then it's still going to be compliant and legible when your evaluator prints it as well. Next slide. So we talked about print submissions. We talked about if you emailed or uploaded them, but don't forget that occasionally you have to submit your proposals on a CD or a thumb drive. Now, we don't see these as often as we used to, but I definitely still see these requirements. Oftentimes, the government will ask for both a print submission and an accompanying CD. So similar best practices with email apply to CD, but a little few, a few more steps as well. So again, you want to make sure that the files are named and organized according to the instructions. Make sure that if they didn't tell you how to name the files, that you organize it in a way that makes sense. So you don't want, for example, volume one to say volume O N E, and then volume two to say volume two, Roman numeral two. You want to be consistent in how you organize it. You want to have your, your company name on it. Think about what the evaluator's experience is going to be like. They're going to receive a whole bunch of proposals that all say volume one on it. You want to make sure to have your company name on it. And most important is that when you burn files to a CD or to a thumb drive, burn it on the CD, take it out of your computer, put it on another computer, and confirm that all the files saved and that they can all open. And I can attest that this um, is an important test. I've had that happen before where it looks fine on one computer and another computer can't open it. Next slide, please. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, this is great, and I'm ready to do a white glove as part of my process, but my entire team is virtual, so I can't, I don't have a conference room where all of us are gonna be standing around flipping pages together, so how am I going to do this? Well, it's simple. You just act like you're in a virtual room. So you use a video conferencing service like Skype or Zoom or something like that. You put the proposal on the screen. You um, make sure that everybody has a soft copy as well. Ideally, they printed a local copy. And as you're going through soft copy on the virtual presentation, they're also looking in the hard copy along with you at the same time. And again, just looking for the same things that we just talked about in the proposal for that final high quality review. Next slide. All right, so here's one of the last tips that I'm gonna give you and then we're pretty much wrapped up on this topic. Before you print or final or save your proposal as final, you always want to make sure to check that all of your table of contents and exhibits and cross-references are still working and none of the references are broken. So this is a little um, quick thing that I'm just going to leave you with. I love a control function. Control A, if you don't use it, is your best friend. It basically means select all. 
If you're using a PC, you can use the F9 function on your keyboard, or you can right click on it. Once you have everything selected, similar to what you would see on the screen, you're gonna tell it to update entire table. And what it does is because you selected the entire document, it's going to update not just the table of contents, but it's gonna look for all those cross references in your document. So where you told them, see exhibit three, and you did a cross link to go straight to that graphic, if that link got broken, you're gonna see an error pop up just like what you see on the screen there. This is a great way for you to just quickly go through and test the entire file at once without having to go through one by one by one. So control A, select all is your friend when you're doing a soft copy white glove. Next slide. All right, that's all I have for you today. Uh, make sure to incorporate white glove into your process and best of luck. Jennifer, excellent, excellent presentation. Uh, you always uh, bring great value to the table with uh, with good information. So thanks for presenting. Thanks for taking the time to put together uh, an absolutely outstanding presentation. Thanks to all of the attendees who were uh, who were with us today. Jennifer's contact information is here. It's Jennifer at winbizproposals.com. Her phone number is 202-246-5366. And this recording will be available later today if you want to revisit it for a lot of the great uh, points that Jennifer made. So thanks again, everybody, and we'll hopefully see you at another webinar.